Hey, what's up guys? John here. Two new laws just went into effect that are going to ensure the consolidation of the U.S. financial system. Discover was just acquired by Capital One for $35.3 billion. Capital One and Discover Financial have agreed to merge in a $35 billion deal. Capital One has announced a $35 billion agreement to acquire Discover Financial Services. This just happened a couple weeks ago. And I believe this isn't done in large part due to one of the two laws. The new rule is aiming to lower late credit card fees from around $32 all the way down to $8. And I think this is going to push credit cards and change credit cards to levels we've never before seen. Lending is going to get slashed. Before, you could just sign up for a credit card, get $5,000, $10,000, $20,000, no big deal. But in the future, and I say future, I mean the next 3 to 6 to 12 months, it's going to get hard to, for most people to even get $1,000, even get $500. And I'm going to show you why that it says. I mean, for example, four days ago, Discover said provisions for credit losses of $1.5 billion increased $395 million from the prior year, which was driven by an increase of $806 million in net charge-offs, so net losses, right? Now look at this. Look at the map of America. This is credit card delinquencies, credit card delinquency rates. There's only two states in the entire country that are sub-15% delinquency rates. Only two. One two. That's it. Every other state, you're looking at 18, 20. You know, Mississippi, almost 40 percent delinquency rates. Millions of Americans are feeling the financial sting of mounting credit card debt. Balances climbing to a record high of over a trillion dollars. Credit card debt delinquencies are taking off. New credit card delinquency rates have surpassed their pre-pandemic level. But this new law is going to take this small problem, Many would say it's a big problem, but this small problem and make it a massive problem for credit card companies to the point in which they're going to start to cut off tens of millions of Americans from lines of credit. In this video, I'm going to break this down and show you what's happening with credit cards and what's happening with banks and why we all need to be positioned for this. He or she who has access to money makes the rules. It's always been that way. So when you pay attention to what's unfolding here, you're going to put yourself in a position to have access to money and thus make the rules. Please hit the like button, hit the like button, YouTube will share this content to educate more people about what's going on in America's economy. And if you like to fix your credit, to position yourself for what I believe is gonna be the greatest wealth transfer in American history, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com, that's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item in a credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com, click the link in the description just below this video, schedule a free call for tomorrow, for Tuesday. Take a look at this. So. And this is shocking because uh, now late fees, before it was $35 if you were late on a credit card, $32, $35, maybe even $40. Now that fee is only $8. So when you see the delinquency rates, you know, 20% or 25%, and then late fees going from $35 to $8, what is it going to do? It's going to do two things. One, it's going to reduce income for Discover on those late fees. Two, it's going to ensure that more people stop paying their bills. Because, you know, $8, you know, the average coffee at a coffee shop is six or seven, right? Or a latte. So someone's saying $8 is the penalty for not paying this bill on time. A lot of people are going to say, $8, not a big deal. I'm not going to pay it. I'll deal with it later. I'm going to prioritize my other spending, like feeding myself, because prices are through the roof right now for food costs and average, you know, just daily expenses for living. And so what's going to happen? The loss are going to continue to grow. And in America right now, the average, the average credit card balance is $6,864 in the fourth quarter. So imagine this, you're a credit card company and you're looking for clients to lend money to. And the average client you have is $6,684 or $64. That's how much they owe, right? And you're seeing delinquency rates like this. What would you do if at the same time they are slashing the, the the benefit of you lending money to them from $35 if they stop paying you on time to $8. You would likely reassess who your borrowers are that are high risk, who's likely not going to pay you back, and who's going to be a higher quality borrower with a longer lasting, more profitable relationship, right? That's what's going to happen right now. As we begin to see these consolidations with Capital One and Discover and many other companies, it's going to be far greater. You know, they say that you know it's to uh, you know, it's not just about gaining scale in Wall Street speak. It's to protect itself against the tide and rising fintech and regulatory threats. This is the regulatory threat. 
And that, that fee getting reduced 75%. That's just one of the regulatory threats. It's a chess move by one of the savviest long-term thinkers in American finance, Capital One CEO. As co-founder of the top 10 U.S. bank assets, his tenure is a rarity in the banking world dominated by institutions like J.P. Morgan Chase. The trans, their origins to, shor to shortly after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Now, J.P. Morgan Chase presently is hiring 3,500 new employees. They're renovating 1,500 locations. They're expanding at a time when a lot of other banks are contracting. So when you look at what J.P. Morgan Chase is doing, what Capital One is doing, you can see very, very clearly what's about to happen here. A lot of these credit card companies, a lot of these small banks are gonna get pushed out of business. So look at this. So the rules in part of a broader campaign within the Biden administration take an aim at so-called junk fees. The rule has been sharply criticized by card issuers and lobbyists who say that fees that low don't cover the common customers falling behind and won't do enough to deter credit card users from making late payments. Now, what many people don't realize is when they reduce that late fee, and I think it's a big mistake doing this, the late fee from $35 to $8 because it incentivizes people not to pay their bills on time. And the $8, you know, sure, it's not a big deal, but the late payment on one's credit report is the big deal. I believe having a late payment on your credit report is, you know, one of the worst things to have in your report because it can drop your score upwards of 180 points. And so every time you apply for a loan from a different credit card company or a bank or a real estate loan, and they see that one issue on your report and your score is you know, down 100 points, 150 points, it's going to greatly reduce the likelihood of getting declined on that loan. And so when they're essentially incentivizing people to stop paying their bills in time, they're pushing a lot of people out of the likelihood of getting access to become a homeowner, being able to buy a car at a good interest rate. It's, it's really doing a disservice. And on top of that, credit companies are going to continue to extract lines of credit from borrowers in which they think will likely not pay them back. So it's a, a double-edged sword that is working against consumers. The new cap on late fees may be small compared to what the average consumer is paying on interest. Most credit card companies currently charge well over 20%. The average credit card balance is $6,800 the fourth quarter. Given levels of credit card debt in the economy, making a late payment is cheaper than buying popcorn in the movie. That does not help consumers. Well, this is what is going to be the final, I believe, the final blow for consumers. Look at this in just the last week. If my bank fails, is my money in danger? Jerome Powell, fingerprints are on the next banking crisis four weeks ago. 80% of treasurers fear bank failures a year from Silicon Valley bank collapse. Right? This is all happening right now. Former Fed officials raised deposit insurance to prevent bank runs three weeks ago. Now, what they're doing is this. Now they're saying that if you are overdrawn in your bank account, before it would be a $35 late fee or an insufficient funds fee. Usually you'd have 24 hours to refill your account before getting hit with that fee. Now that fee is going to go from $35 to $3. Now, if it goes to three dollars, and let's say, for example, you're looking after the lens of a bank, because you know that's the only thing that really matters. Our opinion about it is kind of irrelevant. What banks look at it and how they see risk is what matters, because ultimately that is going to be you know what becomes true. If banks are looking at you know an insufficient funds fee of three dollars, and a consumer is overdrafting their account two hundred, three hundred dollars, if you're a bank, would you want to lend that borrower? Two, three hundred dollars for a three dollar fee? Probably not. No, you wouldn't do that, right? Especially considering that a large chunk of these borrowers are not going to pay you back in general, right? So, what's going to happen? Credit card companies are going to start to really cut off consumers. Banks are going to start to cut off consumers that are viewed as high risk. That's what's going to happen. And you know, they they say you know, the top CEO of a uh, RxR Realty, they have five hundred or more fewer banks are going to fold up over the next 24 months. So I think what we're going to witness here is credit card companies folding up, a lot of small local regional banks folding up, and then we're going to start to see those entities working together to change lending rules all throughout America. That's what I think is going to happen. I think we're going to start to see a lot of change happening. You know, it's really hard to you know, change lending rules when there's thousands of banks and you know, tons and tons of credit card companies. But if there's only you know, five credit card companies and you know, 20 banks, it's a lot easier, right? It's a lot easier to bring forward regulation, a lot easier to pass rules. That's what I think we're going to walk into. I think the next year or two, we're going to walk into this scenario where tens of millions of Americans are cut off from credit. 
universal basic income is going to continue to grow. And if people don't have access to lines of credit, how can they survive? They're going to need financial assistance, right? Right now, there's already hundreds of pilot programs for UBI nationwide. In 2022, there's only 82 cities that were issuing some type of UBI program. In 2021, it was only 11 cities. So as you start to pull back the credit, you need more demand for social services. It all makes perfect sense. That's what I think we're walking into. I think we're walking into the greatest wealth transfer in American history. And if you want to get access to lines of credit, maybe to invest in distressed real estate, to buy a business, do something, you want to get your ducks in a row right now. If you have credit card debt, high interest rate credit card debt, now is the perfect time to do a balance transfer if you have the credit score to get approved for it, where you can transfer that high interest credit card debt to a 0% APR card. Some of these cards will offer you six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, no interest to pay them back, and just get on a strict pay down schedule to get that debt paid off. You know, put yourself in a position to where if you were a bank, you would want to lend you money. Meaning, great credit, cash in the bank, strong income, stable income, low consumer debt. If you can check, you know, even two or three of those boxes or four of those boxes, the more boxes you can check, the better off you're going to be to position yourself. Because you look at where the American consumer is right now, they're struggling. So if you can, you know, change the perspective of what a bank will look you know, a U.S., I mean, it's just going to benefit you. It's going to benefit you in a really, really, really big way. I think we're going to see a lot of opportunity popping up in real estate, a lot of opportunity popping up to buy small businesses, to do a lot of things in the next year or two. So if you have any, uh, you know, needs on your credit, you have any issues at all in your credit report, we'd love to help you. My company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any issue at all in your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for tomorrow. Catch you next video.